In Compsol Multiphysics, surface, line, and volume plots are used to visualize results on the surfaces, edges, or 3D domains of a model's geometry. These are among the most commonly used plot types and are applicable to many simulations. In this video, we will demonstrate how to create these three plot types and review several options for using them effectively, including hiding boundaries and manipulating color and data ranges. Today we're going to take a look at the heat sink model in Compsol Multiphysics. This is a great model to demonstrate some post-processing because since it's a multi-physics model, we have to investigate several different effects happening at the same time. This is why it's good to have flexible post-processing tools like what's available in Compsol. So we have heat transfer in solids and fluids, we have laminar flow, a multi-physics node that couples those two together. And first let's take a quick look at some of our plots. This is a, a plot showing the temperature and the fluid flow across the heat sink. So the arrow plot is showing air blowing across the heat sink and the color is uh, telling us its velocity. The surrounding domain and the heat sink itself are showing a temperature plot. We also have isosurfaces showing us the temperature. Uh, these are surfaces where the temperature is constant around the heat sink. We have vertical slices showing the fluid flow velocity on each plane. And then we have contours showing us pressure levels in the heat sink. In this demo, I'm specifically going to concentrate on surface line and volume plots and use the results for the heat sink temperature. The first thing I'm going to do is delete all of these so that we can recreate them. So the next thing I'm going to do after that is go up under my definitions node, which is part of my component. And in the view one node, I'm going to delete this node called hide geometric entities so that I can recreate that as well. Okay, so now we are sort of starting from scratch with our post-processing. I'm gonna create a new 3D plot group. I'm going to add a surface to it and it's automatically chosen temperature. It's predicting what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. And now I'm going to change the color table to thermal light. And that's going to show me warmer colors on the rainbow color table. But I can't actually see the heat sink because I'm looking at the temperature in the entire domain. So I'm going to go back into my 3D plot group. And there's this wonderful button called go to source in the view field. That's going to take me right back to view one under my definitions. I'll add the high geometric entities node in. And now I'm going to select boundaries. So I don't want to select domains. So I'm going to change my geometric entity level. And I'm, I'm going to click on the walls I want to hide. So I'm going to hide the top, the side, and maybe that back wall of the air domain. If I now go back to my 3D plot group, I can see the heat sink. And if I want to take off the grid, I'm going to click this button up on the graphics window toolbar. And now I can do a couple more things just in this surface plot itself. So I might adjust the manual color range and this will cut off some of my data. So it will saturate the plot colors outside of the maximum and minimum values I specify. And in this plot, the maximum temperature was originally 379 Kelvin. But you can see in the color legend when I adjust the maximum to around 325 Kelvin, all the temperature values above 325 are automatically rendered with the same color. If I want to change the manual data range, I will end up rendering a subset of the original data. So I will see holes in my plot because of that. Another thing I might do is remove the data set edges around the heat sink. So now I can't see the outline of the geometry anymore. So there's the option to do that if you need to or want to. And I think I'll remove the manual data range so we can see the whole thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and disable my surface plot so that I can add another one. And now I'm going to go into the data sets node. Data sets are sources of data where solutions are stored by the solvers. So if I click on the study one slash solution one node and I click plot, that will plot the geometric domains where a solution exists and will exclude the parts of the geometry that I've hidden. And I'm just going to duplicate this so that I can create a selection from it. If I right click my new data set, I can choose a selection. And now I can choose domains, boundaries, or edges, or points. 
Using a selection in a data set allows us to create results plots using only a subset of the geometry. So I'm just going to choose the heat sink. And now if I go back to my 3D plot group, I'll re-enable this surface. And now for the data set field, I'll just choose study one slash solution one, two. And now I can see the temperature gradient on the heat sink itself. And this is showing me how the temperature is changing across the pillars. This is something I couldn't quite see as well earlier because the heat sink was so hot compared to everything around it that it looked purely white. And I'll go ahead and disable this surface plot. And now I'm going to add a line plot. So this is a 3D line plot. And once again, I'll plot the temperature, but I'm going to choose my new data set. And now I'm seeing the temperature along every edge of the heat sink and only the heat sink since that's the selection in the data set I chose. I'll go ahead and change the color table to thermal light again. Now if I want to, I could I can also reverse the color table if I want white to be the lowest temperature and red to be the hottest. There's a few different things I can do with this. And lastly, I'm going to create a volume plot. So this is plotting on domains rather than boundaries or edges. Oh, and this is showing my original data set. So if I go ahead and choose the new one, I can see the temperature changing across the heat sink again. And once again, maybe I'll change the color table. This looks pretty similar to the surface plot. So although this looks similar to a surface plot, since it's a volume plot, we can section up the geometry and we're also able to look inside. And I'll adjust the manual data range. And now if I drag the scroll bar here, we can see that portions of the heat sink whose temperature falls outside the range I'm creating are vanishing. And now I might just turn the line plot back on so I can see that alongside the volume plot. Another thing I can do here is if I don't want to have two color legends and I want the same color range, I'll adjust the inherit style settings so that the volume plot is taking its style properties from the line plot and now I only have one color range. And if I want to turn that off completely, I can always just click the graphics window toolbar. There's a button for that. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Next up, we will have some more videos showing how to create plots like arrow plots, slice, streamline, isosurface, and contour plots, and show how to do some really creative things with the post-processing tools in Comsol Multiphysics.